Hi, good evening. Welcome to another episode of Danbury Dems. I'm your host this evening, Andrea Gardner. I am the Danbury Democratic Party Chair, but I'm also a candidate in this upcoming election for town clerk. So this is a shameless plug right now to ask <laughs> you to vote for me. Um, I'm very excited. We have two guests today. Um, they're both candidates on the slate, and they have different, um, they've come to participate in our election in different ways, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But um, like me, they are for Chris Sotero and the Row A team. So first we have Nicole Cassett-Levy. Yeah. Um, Nicole has been very helpful this year in, in our election in that um, it's been a lot of the graphic design work has been done by her and she's on the, um, the slate as running for constable. So thank you, Nicole, You're for coming welcome. this evening. My pleasure. And we have a at-large candidate for city council, Timothy Gabarunji. Um, Timothy ran two years ago for city council in his Ward 7, but this year we recruited him to run at-large. Yes, so did. welcome to you both. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, we're just going to cover some things um, with, the, with the campaign. You guys have been involved in, in various aspects and, and in different ways, um, some more so than ever. I know this is brand new to you, Nicole. Yes. Um, but I think you've been excited by yeah, what you've definitely. seen. It's always, it's always nice to learn new things. Absolutely. And get, to, and get to know things. We still have to get you out. Um, door knocking. Door knocking. <laughs> so that window is closing because our election is coming nope, up I soon. I promise, promise, okay. promise. So you, you heard that, Timothy, right? Yes. That we should, yes. <laughs> I'll She's going to be out there. That. I will hold it. So I, I yeah. have had the pleasure of, of door knocking um, with Tim yes. um, out there. So, um, so we have so two season people. It is fun. It's, it's fun. a lot of yeah. fun. You, you get to hear. Yeah. You get to know the issues. You get to explain the issues. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's a great segue into some of the things we have been talking about on the doors yeah. and some of the responses. So, just from your experience, what have you been hearing? Uh, many of the things I've been hearing. First of all, good evening. Thank you for having me here. Uh, many of the things that we've been hearing on the door, I mean, uh, are really the issues that our voters are concerned about. Uh, this, this, they all tell us about the schools, how they are busting at the seams. I mean, like we have Danbury High, which is pretty crowded. They tell us about the poor state of their roads, the infrastructure, the crumbling infrastructure. And uh, the other issue that comes up is frequently is uh, the state of downtown how it's been the same for the last 18 years and needs to be revitalized. Well, I would even beg to differ that it's not even the same, that it's, it's No, it's, it's not the same at all. No. Right? Yeah. Like, well, so I grew up in Danbury, you? and so um, the downtown used to be where everybody went for that is true. hanging out when you're younger, for dinner when you're older, for dancing, um, and it has changed tremendously. And I think, I remember it starting to change a lot when the mall came. That's sort of my first memory of that. But what I really miss is, um, you know, as teenagers, we would come downtown, we'd meet at the library, we'd get a slice of pizza, and that's sort of disappeared. And it's it's too bad. Yeah, and I think there was also <clears throat> a more vibrant arts and cultural scene. Yes. Um, I do remember the gas ball um, yeah. was, was an oh, event yeah. that, was, yeah. that used to happen. Um, I mean, I, I'm got a big, um, big heart for downtown and my previous role as executive director of City Center Danbury. Yes. And during the eight years I was there, we used to have a pretty vibrant um, independent music scene mm -hmm. that would happen downtown. And uh, it seems like over these last 15 years or so that that has eroded. So I, I do hear that as well on the doors. Um, now you have, um, you have a student in the public school system or yeah, your kids uh, have graduated? My kids have graduated, uh, out going out to Yukon, but we did experience that. We got neighbors who are in the public school system, and mm -hmm. we get all these comments. We do go knock. I did go door knocking with one of our colleagues. A volunteer comes out, chap, and uh, he was telling me about Danbury High, how they can't get through the hallways, Oof. how they get written up because they are late for getting to the next class. Mm. I mean, that's how crowded it is. Well, and yeah. this is it with the new $53 million addition just opened. Expansion, exactly. Oof. Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, and you do hear from a lot of people that move to the area that they're not thrilled with the school system. And uh, again, I, I went through the public school system in Danbury, and it was it was pretty good <coughs> then, but I know, and this is a long time ago now, but Danbury High was huge then and very intimidating as somebody coming into high school. So I can only imagine now how 
big this area has gotten and, and just population wise kids coming into that school it being very overwhelming and not a great way to start high school you yeah know, a little over overwhelming and a little scary and, and some of the facilities too I mean here we have a, a first-rate uh, track team and just now getting uh, the tracks ready I, I saw that recently yeah. tweeted out there Although it's, it's, I guess it's still track season, right? We're still yeah, track season here, yeah, October, going into November. <laughs> yeah, certainly cross country, I'm sure. Um, and that's also something I've definitely been hearing um, at the doors too, is, is the state of the schools. Yeah. Um, as far as the roads. Eek. Uh, eek. Oh. Eek. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us more, Nicole. <laughs> well, I work uh, literally right around the corner from where we are right now at, at uh, Comcast. And I spend time during the day driving. I have my morning coffee run every day, anywhere between 11 and 1. Mm. And it's, uh, you know, the word nightmare uh, seems like, a, but it's a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, it really is just to get, you know, what uh, should take maybe four or five minutes takes 15. Yeah. Um, because of congestion. It's, it's the congestion's the unbelievable. Traffic. And, you know, the roads are not in great shape. I, the, the potholes are unbelievable. I get accused of actually aiming for the potholes when I drive, <laughs> but I don't. But they're all over. So but they're all over. I mean, yeah. the, the swerving you would have to do to stay out of the potholes is not safe either. But um, no, I just, I, it's shocking. And, and I live uh, down on West Worcester in those roads that there are holes on some of our roads around there that, you know, you literally could break a wheel if you hit. So, and it's feels like it's been that way for a long time. It's been like, and they, though they have some roads, they have started to resurface them only now. Yes, when which we're is close to the election. Correct, and yes. also a little unfortunate. I noticed that too, yeah. It is fall, yeah. so mm -hmm. guess what happens? We are going towards winter, Yeah. and when we're in winter, they're gonna take a beating. Yeah, because of the right, snow they're gonna clouds. get plowed. So yeah. for all, all we've spent on the roads, Gets eroded, we don't get to enjoy Yeah, it. depending on the so, winter. So we that's have. again points to again what Chris Cetera has been talking about all this time. Our candidate for mayor, planning, planning, yes. planning. Yeah. Good plans. Well, that's essential. I mean, the fact that there was no plan for the development that has occurred and there was no plan for the school system yeah. to be bigger to handle the kids that obviously would come with the families or be born as new families were uh, moving into the area. And then the congestion, I mean, those, the overdevelopment has really led to the school and yeah, the road issue. the quality of yeah. life. So the, I think, from my estimation, the, the overdevelopment is the first problem. We should have had a coordinated plan. Basically. Yes. It, yeah, and it should have yeah. been a plan for the Correct. last 10 years or so. Yeah, and that, and that is the things that um, uh, Chris Otero is mentioning. Um, you know, the, to, the planning, um, failing to plan is actually... Yes. Planning, planning to fail, to fail. Yeah. and that right now true. we're seeing the result of all the yeah. all the the stress on our quality of life when yeah. it comes to transportation and infrastructure and schools and and our downtown. Um, now you know a lot of people are concerned also that you know we talk about these these big bold ideas mm -hmm. that if it, it really means like well how is that going to impact them? And one thing we've been trying to communicate on the doors mm -hmm. is especially when it comes to having a comprehensive um, transportation study plan, right. that that can be done and road work can be done um, against um, issuing a bond to help fix the roads that can Correct. be um, mm -hmm. balanced against retiring debt so okay. that it doesn't impact taxes. Oh, that's good. good. Um, yeah. yeah, So, and that's really important because... Because a huge pro of living in, in Danbury are the taxes are low. Yes. I mean, you go one town outside of Danbury and it does... All it around us. changes Correct. dramatically. Yeah. It does. You know, so... But it really shouldn't be also at the cost to, to our schools and that's been Agreed. another issue. We've mm -hmm. got a wonderful Danbury delegation um, in representing us in Hartford that um, you know, our candidate has said that he will be the chief lobbyist, that yeah. he will be up there in Hartford um, directly lo lobbying well, for our rightful portion of education funding. One of the great funding. points he made at the debate the other night is he is a litigator and has been a lawyer for how many 25 years. years. For 25, 25 years, for quite a while. So yeah. that's what he does for a living is he negotiates. Yeah, he will and save us the lobby money. Yes. And go up there and do it himself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Well, that's huge. And yeah. also just the fact that that's the face that it is actually representing our city yeah. and is there on the ground talking to the people that are going to make the decisions. So that was something the other night that he said that stuck with me is just that he does have this, um, I'm sure in some ways it's a natural ability to negotiate, but it's also what he's been practicing for a really long time. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Yeah. yeah like you do want to <coughs> want him on you do. your side. You yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, you don't want to cross it. <laughs> Just he kidding. Brings his, yeah, he brings <laughs> no, his lawyerly experience. Great. He's a lawyer. He brings that yes. experience. He's a businessman. 
downtown. And, yeah, so he brings right, that to He's too. downtown he's in champion business. He's business, yeah. And he's grown up here. Yes, yeah. he has. Because so he's, he's seen rich. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, as Greg he, likes to say, he has skin in the game. Yeah. He has and that's, he's got that's, a lot of skin yeah, in the game. Yeah, he does. He and does. I think that's a really important point is that he, he's invested for himself as well. Not, you know, it's, it's not just a political thing, it's his life too. Yeah, so. and speaking of that, and we've heard this, and it's also things that we communicate when we're talking to voters directly, is that um, you know his end game is to be mayor of Danbury. Yeah. Yes. He has to sort of extend beyond that. Yeah. And I, I have to say after um, you know, being he, really working to help revitalize downtown that I think that's that would be the most amazing thing, is to have yeah. someone who's a, attentive to the office yes. and focusing on the issues. Agreed. Yes, he is, and uh, the d first time I met Chris, I know we were at the uh, convention in Hartford, mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen, I never met this gentleman, quite a charming gentleman, and then I meet him, and then he later talks to us, and he tells me about how he wants to become mayor. Yeah. And it was like his dream job, he just really wanted to become mayor of Danbury. And he clearly had a plan at that time early on, yeah. and that was still the same issues he's talking about now, the downtown, the roads, and the schools. Yeah. And he's kept, and to bring change. Yeah. After yeah. 18 years, you know, there's really no one else, we, you know, it's been 18 years, everyone has had an opportunity. The people responsible have had an opportunity yes. to yeah. avoid where we find ourselves now. Yeah. Well, so and, and like change. you said, yeah. just having a different perspective. That's important will change things. Right, and, Just and that his, alone. his underlying passion is still the same um, because previous to running for mayor, previously against Mark Bowen, which was 18 years ago, and, yeah. and um, losing by the really the narrowest of margins, mm. um, he was on the city council and served on the city council for 10 years, including being city council president. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. and one of the things which um, you know, I've heard him mention I can truly appreciate is that um, even while he was president of the city council, and there was a minority of, of Republicans, he made sure as the leader of the city council that he engaged the minority and that their voices were heard. Um, I, I have so been attending. Reaching across the aisle. Reaching across <laughs> yeah. the yeah. aisle yeah. because, I mean, that's really what's best for the community. Absolutely. Um, I've been attending city council meetings for well over 10 years, and I am frustrated mm -hmm. by um, how quickly the city council meetings go because there is a supermajority of Republicans that represent the city government. and. Mm. There are items that are consent agended. More than half the agenda will be consent agended. And um, of the remaining items, it's already predetermined, the ad hoc committees and who's going to serve. And, and I, have, I have gone to city council meetings more than once. Um, and for those who haven't attended a city council meeting, it generally opens with a pledge of allegiance and a prayer. There's an announcement of city council members' um, sort of life cycle events, if there's a birthday, if there's an anniversary. Um, and then there's all the um, community events are, are listed and, and, and announced. And then there's a public hearing. And then we get to the agenda. And then so we, how we long were, is this evening? <laughs> <laughs> this evening. I'm, this I'm evening. Get to the business. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm honestly going to say probably 85 to 90 percent of the time, um, the city's business is conducted in less than an hour. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, the, so the, the the sharing of ideas, input, like yeah. real deep discussion about how to solve our problems. Is not happening. Yeah, it's not happening. We're and going to change that. We're going to change that. We are going to change that. We are going to change that. One of our colleagues who's also standing for uh, wait is in Ward Two. Elvis Novas. Yes, Elvis Remember, Novas in, he, in Ward Two. He stood up and said that at one of our meetings that he's not standing for the sake of becoming a councillor, but he's going to bring change. Good. Yeah, and represent and change. And represent change. So yeah. we're going to change all this. City business will last much longer. What is Chris's? Yeah. Changes here. Changes, changes here. here. Changes, changes now. Changes now. now. Yeah. yeah. You should know that. You've been printing all one our, our good stuff. One would think. One would think I'd know it by art. Well, <laughs> one of the things, back to the transportation issue, not only, yeah. you know, in, in your, in where you're going for your coffee runs, yeah. but also your business takes you in and around the city all Absolutely. over the place. Absolutely. Just trying to get to a meeting during the day, trying to see a client, make a delivery. It is... It's really hectic, and I have a son across town that you know that I pick up after school or take to his piano lesson at the Music Learning Center on Main Street, which is amazing. Yay! Uh, yay. I love that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, again, it's that whole area. You know, a lot of us that grew up around here. It's uh, I'm I remember it all very fondly, and I like bringing Max downtown. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, back to the transportation. So getting from what shouldn't be that far of a distance from my workplace to Worcester School to, to a meeting or yeah, to a meeting to drop him off. You know, it ends up you're in your car in a local area for an hour and a half. And mm. that's for us. You haven't left the town, you know. Yeah, so, that so that gets yeah, that gets a little. And you can you can feel it, you know, that energy just driving. Everybody has it because everybody's doing the same thing. Correct. Yeah, yeah we're it's all, really something that's yeah. been resonating yeah. with people. So, yeah. so Tim, I'm going to venture from your accent that you're not that you did not grow up in Denver. No, I did not grow really? up in Denver. No, I did not. No, it comes as a surprise. It was Bethel, right? <laughs> Actually, I did first that in Stamford, Connecticut, when I oh. m moved here in 2004. But uh, a few, actually, a few days ago, I did drive back to Stamford. Oh, and in the that? few years since, it's changed. Yeah. yeah, the downtown especially has changed. Correct. And I was like, okay, why hasn't Denver changed? Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. This is Denver. what we're talking this about. This is what we're talking Definitely. about. If Stamford could change, surely if Stam uh, Danbury we should change too. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. what brought you to Danbury? You, you have children so, that you raised here. Correct, yeah. yes. So at the time, uh, I wanted to buy, because I was renting and I wanted to buy. And uh, Stanford was a little expensive, so came up north. And I got a nice place for the size, for the money, mm -hmm. in Danbury. And it was a nice school. You know, the school district also was nice. Uh, you know, the children were younger. And uh, so it worked out just well. Mm. So nice family home and everything. A nice uh, uh, town home, nice mm -hmm. neighborhood, was safe, looked good, and uh, I liked it. Well, I, and safety is important, yeah. especially yeah. given um, from where you've come. I know Correct. we read a forum, um, really, that the students for a dream had had yes. um, hosted, yes. and you shared a little bit of your story yes. of, of connecting with people in our community who potentially right now might be worried about what the national rhetoric and yes, what the, yeah. rever the reverberations of that are on our local community. So uh, you can share if you'd like. I, I was touched by it only because I think we need to be reminded. Oh yes, uh, yeah, I did uh, grow up, I, I was born and grew up in my native Uganda. At that time, uh, we did experience dictatorship, mm. right? So uh, we had war as well. Right, quite a few wars. Most of my uh, teenage life, actually, until I was about, was lost to war, mm. right? Mm. And uh, we, when there's war, you do have to escape the war. So my parents would move with us. I mean, we would actually drive out of town at that time, or we'll walk out of town, literally carrying your belongings Oish. on your back. Or your and, not, and not being able to go back or, or, or not being able to go back. go back. And, and where you go to, you're essentially really a, a, an internally displaced person, as they call yeah. it. And you're essentially a refugee. So, but you hope that where you're getting to, you'll be received, mm -hmm. which fortunately we were. Because mm -hmm. when we left school also, the same thing happened as uh, I was finishing school. There was another war, the last one, big war. And uh, we had to, Escape. I was serious. Imagine the whole of Danbury High mm -hmm. running off Oy. without really? parents and without wow. teachers, all of us, and we kept all this, the whole student body together. And we stayed out under the stars in the bush for two nights. Wow. And we somehow fed ourselves and kept everyone alive and got everyone back alive. And we were young That's people amazing. then. Wow. So this was the that, experience. That changes and your hardwiring it does, as correct. a human, right? Correct. So, but when you get back here and uh, which is my fear, and you see a few people taking chances with liberties. Yeah. You know? You mean here now in here this country? In the United, yeah. Here in the United States, or, or even worse, when you see things like gun violence. Mm. I mean, I, because of the war, personally, I am I'm removed from guns. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen, I understand You've seen what, they can do. what guns can do. Mm. So I under, from a personal perspective, I understand the Second Amendment. I understand, I really understand it actually. Yeah. How it is. It is really supposed to be regulated. It is in the Second Amendment. So I really understand how that came about. And I also understand because essentially we were fighting for freedom. So I understand the struggle for freedom as well because mm -hmm. we, it yes. happened in my life. I saw that happening. Up close and personal. Up close and yes. personal. So that's what I see. And that's what I brought. Uh, that's the experience I bring. I understand. I have deep respect for liberty and freedoms. I bet. No, that's incredible. Yeah. And in our particular, um, the context of um, what the, the forum was in was really um, 
mostly some of the our Latino community members, right, who might be um, have family who are at the borders, our, our southern yeah. borders, mm -hmm. and you, you said you, you really understand, understand what those people at the borders are, are going well, through. I, yeah. I mean, they, you do not run away with your child. Unless. Unless there <laughs> yeah. is a serious yeah. force pushing you. Yeah. You, you, you will you will, you will accommodate so much. Yeah. But when there is threat to life and property, especially life, yeah. amazing things do. The human, the spirit, like I said, students, think of Dan Berhai. We just went out without parents or anything. Yeah, for two days. We went it's out, incredible. walked out, mm. on our walking, just because you're very scared. I'm very worried, and you don't know where your next meal is coming. You don't know where your shelter is coming from. Sounds you, terrifying. It is. It yeah. is. So when you see these people at the borders and they are kept in cages and stuff like that. Well, and you can feel removed from it when you're watching it on TV. You, it, 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 it's, yeah. it, you know, yeah. you, you're really coming at it from such a different perspective because you lived it. And even people, you know, every everybody has different feelings about it. And some people look at it and they don't feel anything about it or think they, that um, immigrants have brought it upon themselves yeah, and they're not being good parents because they made this is, choice for is. themselves and their kids. And I think other people look at it and um, even if you're looking at it through a television screen, you feel the pain of a parent taking their kid and Into traveling an unknown, an unknown yes. thousands of miles. And I've heard a few stories. I, I have a very close friend who immigrated here from um, Ecuador, and they literally walked for a month. Yeah. And he was under a truck, holding on underneath a truck to get across the border and has burns all over his arms from that uh, passage. I can't imagine how bad it was to put yourself through that yeah. to get here. So, so we um, want to be more compassionate. I think as I community think, yes. Yes. members, yes, yes, and, and, yeah. and understand that we've never experienced. A, a lot of us have never experienced anything that. like it. And to have that empathy for people, even if we're not, they're not like us, or we don't understand their lifestyle, or maybe we don't speak the same language, um, that you extend that empathy and think about it maybe from your own perspective if you were in that situation, so. Well, and I think too that if, when we look at our democratic slate, um, we do really do have a variety of people who represent all facets of the community. Yes, you do. And I think in the end, at least what we're committed to, I think as Danbury Democrats, is that um, we focus on the values we want to hold in, in, our, in our community. So while we may be very different, there's 50 plus languages that are spoken by the Danbury Public School student body. <laughs> yes, that's I, I, I believe we, we share, we have certain values that we all share and we want to promote within our city. Um, I don't necessarily feel that we have an administration now that is, that is creating an environment where we can share those, those values of you know, compassion and um, wanting to provide equal access to resources mm -hmm. for, for everybody mm -hmm. and um, you know quality first rate education yeah um, that, that's, that's demonstrated and also yeah. you, you know the, you, you mentioned something but ha uh, enjoying each other's culture I think would um, would lend to people understanding like spending time with people from other cultures yeah there used to no, be an no, international yeah. fest that, which would be you know, amazing and it's just amazing. that hasn't amazing. happened in about 18 yeah, years well, yeah well it feels it feels a little segmented right now people are you know sort of clinging to their people that are like them which and is unfortunate right think. it is unfortunate because you learn so much when you're around people that aren't like you and um, those are some of my most enjoyable friendships, people that are very different from me because you see things you would never see and just eating in different kinds of restaurants, Correct. going. Yeah, and our downtown could be a mecca for all yes, of that. Absolutely. And, really be, and, and draw people from outside and yeah. be, be a, an engine for economic development. And there are a lot of great restaurants yeah, down there already. I know we're talking about, you know, uh, one of Chris's big uh, the, points is the dining district the dining and district, bring, you know, yeah, bringing, you know, dining and entertainment back to downtown. But there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot there, there's too. There's a lot to that, be said that, for that. Yeah, and there's a lot there already. Um, you know, Brazilian and Ecuadorian and Portuguese and yeah, Honduran, Mexican. Yeah. Like, let's go downtown Chinese, and enjoy the American. Those. Yeah. yeah. Andrea and I do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, we, we head down there. Yes, absolutely. So we, we only have, um, we have a, a few minutes left. But, um, and also just a few weeks left to the election. Oh, yes, so exciting. Um, exciting. I, I, of course, encourage you to family, friends, neighbors, yes. everyone, every, everyone come out and participate. 
Um, so, because uh, I think it's really important that we have civic engagement yes. in our communities. Yes. No matter who you're voting for, just get out and vote. Yeah, very that's important. very true. So we're going to see you um, hitting the doors. Right? Absolutely. We're gonna actually <laughs> maybe and, this and weekend. And I and I also would say to anyone, get excited, Dan Get excited <laughs> because. It really is so important to really connect with the voter, and yeah. um, our candidate has been on the door since April door knocking. Amazing. Yeah. Um, we have hit, you know, uh, 6,500 households. We've yeah. touched 15,000 voters so far, and uh, it really makes the difference because we really are on the front line of hearing what it is that concerns people in Danbury, and it really is about our education system, how we don't want to be 169th out of 169 schools in per yes. pupil spending. Yes. We want to change that. It's about our infrastructure, that, which is also an economic development um, component and, and how we need to really have a comprehensive study with the roads um, that hasn't been done in 30 years. Wow. Could have been done in the last 15, 18 years. Yeah. Just saying. That would be good. Just saying. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> just right. saying. Absolutely. Just saying. <laughs> and also um, about our downtown. And, and really seeing true revitalization there yeah. and creating that as, as, as a place. It. Because we have, I mean, I know you, you, you have a teenage son, you'd love to see him have, Would love it. you know, be able to find financial prosperity in Danbury. It'd be great. Your children, right? Wouldn't it be Definitely. nice if they came back? I would like nice also to be able back. to enjoy yeah. the downtown socially. Um, you know, I th the Palace Theater used to be amazing. If we had wow. theater, if we had some play, yeah, there's some stuff street that, yes, and, things and could happen. Things like that. For sure. Well, good. So you guys have been yeah. terrific. Um, quickly, I want to just say a huge thanks to Andrea. I've been watching her tirelessly work. Oh. She is no, a really, like I mean a tirelessly, tireless and fearless leader. Yes, and it's it's very inspiring. <laughs> it is. You you're killing it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes. well, we'll no, see. We'll amazing. See. We'll see You've November done a great job. How, yeah. How how we move the dial. Yes. And, and it's always a team effort. Yeah. It always yeah. is. So um, for anyone who's watching, um, I do want to tell you that you can, you can reach us. We have a, a Facebook page. Um, we have um, a Danbury Democrats Facebook page, danburydemocrats.com. Um, we are phone banking every night. Stop by headquarters. Um, we still have signs. If you want signs, come and pick up a sign. To, we need to, more yard signs out there. Yard <laughs> signs. It's, it's, it's a big battle out there with the signs. We'd be glad to give you more signs. And um, phone, like I said, phone banking, canvassing. Um, the next couple of weeks, we're amping it up. We're going to be having our, our, our Get Out the Vote rally October 26 at Hatters Park. Oh, so fun. So be sure yeah. to be that. So I thank you so morning. much. Nicole thank Pasolini you. for Constable thank you. and thank Jim Gavarungi so for City Council at Large. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so you much. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure, my.